Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Chris. Today I'm going to do some work in Lightroom and show you some techniques that I learned just yesterday. Actually, I watched a video by a guy or by a channel named Mark McGee Photos. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. But pretty much uh, what I learned from him was how to edit color photos in black and white first and uh, use that to transition into kind of dark moody tones. So I'm going to edit a few photos for you guys today, maybe one or two in this video using those techniques that I just learned yesterday. So let's give it a try, see how it turns out, see if it's uh, something that I wanna keep doing for future photos. And then you guys can let me know what you think of these edits. Okay, let's go ahead and get started editing this photo I took in downtown Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. So first things first, we want to make sure we're editing a straight photo. We're gonna line up some of these grid lines with the um, with some element of the picture that you know is vertical or horizontal. So I'm looking at the left side of the Warner Center sign, line it up with a grid line, and then I'm also looking at the horizontal lines uh, in the brick crosswalk uh, right at the foreground. So we want to get a nice balance, best balance we can between those uh, things. It was pretty good to start with. And what we're going to do for this kind of technique is drop the exposure. Just right off the bat, drop the exposure down to like... I don't know, minus two to minus 2.5. We're gonna go right at minus 2.3 for this one. I think it's pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the saturation out of all of the colors using the color sliders. And what we don't want to do uh, instead is go up to the saturation slider and put that to zero because we're eventually gonna to wanna to bring individual colors back. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, so now we're at a fully black and white photo. And then the next step is going to be cranking up the whites pretty much to the max. Uh, nothing in this photo be except the sky is really that white, so we're not gonna be blowing out any part of this photo. Um, and then as you'll see, the sky will be able to come back. Uh, the blacks we could bump down just a, a, a little bit, but I think that's gonna be okay. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is dehaze. We're gonna bump up dehaze to around like the plus 30 area and then the clarity also to like the plus 30 area and then texture back down a little bit. If we're increasing clarity, we're gonna to wanna to decrease texture. So now pretty much what you can see is happening is we're getting like cool moody lighting in our picture without any color involved to kind of skew our perception because if we do it this way, uh, the saturate, it'll, it'll just get really oversaturated. So we wanna take the color out and bring it back in later. Next thing we want to do is do some typical masking. We're going to darken the road in front of the bus to you know, make that part dark and make the eye go up into the center of the photo where the subject is. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight that, bring down the exposure like a stop or so. Just make the road a little bit darker. And now we want to work on the sky. So the sky is going to be one of the main parts of the image. We're gonna go ahead and select sky here using that mask and now we are going to crank up the dehaze a whole bunch to like plus 60 or something like that bump up the clarity again to like plus 30 and you can see we're getting some pretty sweet looking storm clouds going on uh texture can well it's up to you i i think we're going to go down on texture uh, for this particular shot for the sky. So now we have a nice stormy looking scene going on. Uh, our lighting is looking great. We're getting some really good contrast going on in here. We can go back to the full edits. We can bring down the highlights a little bit too, and that will kind of darken the sky a little bit further back into the background and kind of bring up some of the sides of the image. We can go to like minus 45 is looking pretty good. Now it's time to work on the tone curve. So we just want to increase the blackest of blacks. We don't want to do this. We don't want to just do this because it moves the whole line. See how it moves the whole line? We don't want to do that. We want to fix a few points here. That will make sure those three points that we just added stay exactly where they are. So now we can just adjust the bottom one and only adjust the blackest of blacks. So now we have a pretty cool looking black and white photo as is but let's add some colors back in so uh we're pretty much gonna just slide these color sliders around for saturation and just see where that color is in the picture so starting with red it's in the bus it's in the stoplight in the bricks in the top left and in the warner sign those are all good to have 
We're gonna crank red all the way up to plus 100 just to maximize the focus on the bus. Orange, let's see, it's in a lot of the picture, but we don't want it everywhere. We just want a little bit of orange, a little bit in the Warner Center sign, a little bit in the bricks, but other than that, not too much. So we're just gonna leave it down there around minus 70. There's a lot of yellow going on, but I don't really want yellow in this picture. Mostly because of the building right behind Warner. It kind of ruins the, the mood a little bit if we if we increase the saturation. I'm going to keep yellow down to actually zero. I'd rather have that building black and white than have color. There's really no green in the picture, so we're going to keep that at zero anyway. There's a little bit of aqua movement in the sky. We don't really need it, though. We can bump aqua a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of blue in these clouds, so I'll just, sh just to show you, we'll put it to 100, so that's where the blue is. We obviously don't want blue clouds, we want black and white clouds, so we're going to keep blue pretty low, but we still have a little bit of blue just to make it like a nice cool temperature scene. Purple is in the Penn Hills sign on the bus. Don't want any color in that, rather have that white, and then magenta is in the bike rack in the front of the bus. Also would rather have that black and white. So we're just gonna keep those saturations at zero and that's gonna be it for saturation. Now let's look at luminance. This pretty much affects the, the brightness of specific colors. So we want our reds pretty bright. Uh, just cause of the bus, we want to emphasize the bus a bit more. So we're gonna bump that up. Oranges also we're gonna bump up a bit. I think would, it would be good to add a little bit of brightness. Yellow, we can come down a bit. I think those buildings that have that are like mostly made of yellows can come down. Green doesn't matter because there's no green in the image. Aqua matters a little bit because there's aqua in the clouds. We want to make those clouds a little bit darker. Same with blues. We'll make these uh, clouds right at the top a bit darker. Magenta, again, is in the Penn Hill sign. We want to crank that up just so that's a little bit brighter in the bus. And then magenta will bump it up just to have a little brightness in that bike rack. Um, let's look at hues really quick. War the orange will bump down a little more towards the red just to get that better feel in the Warner sign. Red is pretty good where it is. And I think everything else is just fine. We don't want to really add any colors uh, for those. Let's go down to color grading. So to give this a little cooler feel, we're gonna put some blues in the shadows. So we're gonna do this. And I think that gives us a nice cool feel of the image. And then we wanna put some yellows and green in the highlights. And that kind of like goes along with the, the stormy feel. We're gonna get some yellows way back in the, in the background clouds. Um, we're just gonna do that, just a little bit of yellows. We can, adjust this the the like brightness of the shadows we can bring down just a tad maybe that's kind of cool um, and then let's let's vary the the highlights to see what we want to do I think right where it was is actually just fine midtones we don't really need to mess with I think it's looking pretty good if you want anything I would go just a little bit more blue in the midtones as well maybe aqua -y a little bit kind of like the same as the shadows, just copy the shadows, but don't put too much saturation or else you're just gonna have a blue photo. That's not gonna look too good. Uh, we're gonna come down to this, always check to remove chromatic aberration, there's no reason not to. And then vignetting, um, I'm not really feeling it. Maybe a little bit of darken, darkening of the corners there. Uh, and yeah, I think that'll do it for kind of the dark feel for um, this particular photo. I think I'm gonna actually remove the blues out of the mid-tones. I, I don't want too much blues. So I think, yeah, I think that's gonna be it right there, guys. Let me know what you think about this photo. Let me go ahead and kind of compare. So this was the original, uh, and this is what we just edited it to. So uh, I think it's a huge improvement and an awesome edit. I'm a big fan. So let me know what you think of this one in the comments. All right, now let's do one more photo and I'll get over to that now. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a copy uh, and then we're just going to reset all the settings back to the original photo, which is here. And this is a very bright photo, might be a little overexposed, but we're going to give it a try and see how it looks with our um, dark moody edits. 
uh, editing strategy. So first we're gonna we're gonna do the same process that we did for the last photo. We're gonna drop the exposure this time by three whole stops because it started out really bright. And then we're going to go to saturation of all the colors and bring all those down. And that's just step one. And now we have a fully black and white photo. We're going to go over to our whites. We're gonna crank those up. We're gonna go to our blacks, crank those down a little bit. Um, I think shadows a little bit down, highlights a little bit up. Uh, and then we're gonna take this exposure up back to three. I think three on the money is pretty good. All right, so that's where we are. And now let's go ahead and reintroduce some saturation because I'm kind of liking how these, uh, this lighting is. Actually, let's do some masking first. I want to um, darken the foreground a bit right there. We already have some shadow uh, on the right side, so we're kind of just going to focus on the left side here. Um, and then we are going to... Uh, does anything else need a little darkening? Maybe we want new mask. New mask, linear gradient. Okay, now we're going to highlight up here a bit. Just in this building, it's a little bit dark, so we're going to highlight that and then drop exposure. Um, just a bit kind of like this so now we have the brightest part being our subject with the ground around her and then um, all of the other stuff all the extraneous detail is kind of uh, dark so that's good I kind of like it and now from here we, I have the lighting where I want now let's reintroduce some colors so uh, let's go back down to our color saturation sliders uh, changing the red, we have a little bit of red in the hair and then in the, I don't know if that's skin tones or like props, hit the Y key to see the original. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think those are skin tones in the back, in the back left there, but we're going to bring just a, a bit of red back. Um, and then orange, we're going to, orange is a lot of the photo. We don't want to turn the saturation super up on the orange, even though our subject's hair is one of the like focal points of the image but if I but because so much of the image is orange we're gonna leave it pretty low and then I think we're going to brush <laughs> we're gonna brush her hair and uh, pump the saturation of that individually so uh, for now let's leave it kind of low like minus 69 here yellow uh, we don't like for this kind of mood green doesn't really do anything in this particular photo there's some aqua in the um, in the windows uh, behind her, like back here behind their head, and then there's some also some blue. But we don't really want to add too much blue. We're just gonna keep that pretty darn low, just to kind of keep the the black and white feel. And then purple and magenta. There's not really much in the photo, and we that's we're fine just leaving it as is. Oh, we forgot to do some dehaze and texture and clarity, which I sh we should have done before doing the colors. We don't need much though, or else it'll just get too dark in the dark areas. So let's go ahead and bump dehaze a little bit, bump clarity a little bit, and then texture down uh, a little bit. Now we're going to come back to the colors and adjust the luminance uh, accordingly. So luminance of the red, we can bump a little for the hair. Uh, luminance of the orange, we're pretty much going to keep where it is, otherwise it's going to blow out the image since the ground is kind of based in orange. And same with the yellow, the ground is based in yellow. We don't want that to be too crazy, but we can bump it a little bit. Green doesn't really do anything, that's fine. Aqua is just the uh, thing uh, behind her head here, and it doesn't really make much difference from negative 100 to plus 100, so we can go ahead and do that. Same with the blue. I think I do like it a little brighter though, so we're gonna bump the luminance of the blues. Uh, and then magenta, um, there's the sign all the way in the top left, all the way up here. That's being changed by the magenta slider, but it's negligible, And but magenta is also negligible. So that's gonna be fine for now. Uh, next, we're going to brush her hair with a brush here and we're going to increase the saturation once we do that so let's go ahead and zoom on in hold down the space bar and that lets you drag around a little bit and we're just going to brush the hair so let's go ahead and do that okay that's good uh, that's good 
and now we're going to go down and bump the saturation a bit and that looks good okay click to the side here let's get rid of mask now click to the side that'll bring us back to the full view um, and now what we want to do is kind of bring up our blacks a little bit so we want to put some points on the tone curve here and we're just going to grab the bottom left corner one and bring it up a little bit uh, if you do the extreme you can see what it's affecting but we're just going to bring it up a little bit to make the blacks a little bit less harsh and now we're going to go ahead to our color grades so we're going to again put some blue into the photos in the, in the shadows uh, and then we're going to put some yellow greens in the highlights so there we go uh, now taking a look at this photo i kind of like it but i think what i want to do is crop just a little bit oh actually we never did crop originally so we're gonna have uh, a good crop here so for this is like the instagram size crop the four by five eight by ten go ahead and center it around her now i think we have a nice balance of blacks and whites i do want to bring back the full foreground here um, instead of having the background i'm trying to think of what i would change i think this is kind of better just because now it's there's more black in the foreground and it's almost like divided into three and she's in the middle so that's kind of cool uh yeah let's take it to an extreme a little bit how's that look mm, it's a little fake because you know it's so bright on her jacket but then she's like walking in sh uh, like shade there's a shadow in the shade it's a little weird so you got to think about reality a little bit when you're editing to make sure it's not too unrealistic so i think right here is a pretty good spot we're gonna leave it at that thanks for watching this one guys catch me in the next videos uh, i'm gonna do a ton of this i'm gonna do a lot of lightroom editing live kind of talking through my thought process so uh let me know if you're gonna enjoy that if that's something you're looking forward to uh consider hitting the subscribe button for me and we will catch you in the next one see you later guys